Hello again, this is Doc Rotten from Gruesome Magazine and Horror News Radio. Joining me tonight is the one and only Rafe Telsch. He has another review. This one is the creatively titled Dawning of the Dead. How are you doing, Rafe? Hey, everybody. Doing great. How are you, Doc? I'm doing good. You know, I'm I'm actually kind of surprised the film hasn't done this already. Uh, what do you think of this title, Dawning of the Dead? You're familiar with uh, the Asylum Production Studio? I very much so. Yes, it, it felt like that to me. You know, we have Pacific Rim, so they came out with, what, Atlantic Rim, um, that kind of stuff. Dawning of the Dead is very obviously a play on Dawn of the Dead by uh, Romero. But it also it kind of ties into the story because at least we, we do with this find out uh, the, the origin of its zombie apocalypse, which it is it's a zombie apocalypse movie. So, Well, we would hope so with that title because if it wasn't, we'd all be very disappointed, wouldn't we? Yes. <laughs> so, so okay, so we're starting off strong. It is delivering on its title. Uh, the director, there's, a, I guess, a, a series of directors. So is this an anthology film? No, it's not. It is uh, one solid story through and through. Series of directors is very curious to me, I'm, uh, given that some of them have had other movies come out. And, and some of them are credited as segment directors. So to me, that kind of makes sense. Like the opening of the movie, uh, you have a segment, the, especially the opening credits, that's very self-contained as we see what starts the zombie apocalypse, which is a uh, uh, terrorist attack, actually in a variety of locations. And, and then some of the movie splits off from the main narrative to show uh, how this is spreading around different parts of the world. So maybe they directed parts of that. I don't know. How does that work when it all gets stitched together? Does it, you said it was very much a singular story. So, you know, is, is, as I said, it's a zombie apocalypse movie. Uh, you know, the original Dawn of the Dead takes place in a shopping mall. You have the original Night of the Living Dead that takes place in a farmhouse. Well, this takes place in a news studio building. So it kind of makes sense to interrupt the, the news studio story to go to, you know, oh, this is what's happening in Rio, Rio de Janeiro or this is what's happening in, you know, Russia or that kind of stuff. It, it, it's not – um it's not done in a very organic fashion. It's inter- it, it does disrupt the narrative, but it, it does make sense at least. All right. Well, now that we've got that aside, how, how does the film work uh, as a whole then? It, it, it's very uneven, I guess, is the best way to say it. You know, the, we have uh, zombies done on a weekly basis right now on television, on uh, Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead or um, Z Nation. Uh, and this has some really brilliant zombie effects in it. And then the next second, it'll have a shot where you can see very clearly that they're using like sausage links as entrails or something. I mean, it's it's very uneven. Um, some of the special effects are absolutely abysmal, especially when it comes to using fire. Like they have two car explosions and they're just sad as far as visual effects go. But then some of the zombie effects are really good. Um so as a story, it's not bad. It's just not great. You follow um, the main character who's uh, uh, a reporter, and she uh, is trying to survive along with her crew. You have your very generic archetypal characters in there. You've got the jerk who uh, is arrogant, and you just can't wait for him to get taken down. You've got the the person who's freaking out and is barely able to move. And at the same time, you've got a separate story going on where uh, the reporter's boyfriend and his brother um, were in a different location, and they're trying to get back to the main building. So, um, you know, it, it, it works as a story. Production values could have been far better, uh, especially the audio editing on it. There are a lot of scenes, uh, I would say, most of the scenes where it's very obvious that they looped the audio and there's no ambient noise. There's just music covering up the fact that you're hearing actors trying to match up to their original lines. Uh, well, I am very curious, sir. Uh, what is your score? One to five. And what is your favorite scene? You know, there's some, some really good stuff in here. The story itself is not fantastic and it's not, um, it's not original by any means, um, but I'm going to give it two stars. I, I, um, my favorite scene is uh, where the two brothers get trapped in a maintenance closet, and they put together a weapon using a floor buffer, and the sequence pays tribute both to Sam Raimi's uh, Army of Darkness Evil Dead movies, but it also pays very much homage 
to Peter Jackson's uh, Dead Alive. So it's kind of cool to see a little bit of tribute here and there to people who came before in the genre. All right, Rafe, thank you for yet another great review. Let's say goodnight. All right, goodnight, everybody. Be sure to visit GruesomeMagazine.com to listen to the other gruesome podcasts, Horror News Radio, and Decades of Horror. Also check out the Gruesome Magazine Quarterly, available in digital and print-on-demand format. 